As ever, I'm joined by uh, James Creedon in the studio. Good evening, Hi there, James. Now, this is going to be slightly different than the rest of the day's news. We've got some rather unusual (laughs) footage, I believe. Starting off with the French Prime Minister, Jean-Marc Ayrault. He's back from holiday, um, but he's been relaxing, it seems. A video of him playing the drums has been buzzing online I think it's one of these videos, Catherine, where they they know that they're putting the person in a slightly unorthodox situation. Because he's usually a very serious man. That's right. He's generally making speeches or policy decisions. Let's take a look at these pictures where he's playing um, an African percussion instrument called the djembe. And this is in uh, the gardens of Matignon, the Prime Minister's residence, in the 7th arrondissement of Paris. And this whole thing was announced for days and days and days and days ahead by his press people as if it was some very serious, you know, announcement. A huge event. Announcement. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's partly to draw attention to the fact that he's there during the official um, holidays, basically, of, of, the, of the French Parliament, Yeah, good for him. That's right. And <laughs> Hollande is, is off. And so, you know, somebody's in the house basically making sure that the important decisions are being taken and the drums are being played where necessary. Yeah, perhaps a bit of spin <laughs> there as well, trying to work on I think so. his image. I right, think now so. another bit of uh, spin, a bit of uh, online video. Norway's Prime Minister found himself an unusual way of yes. reaching out to voters. Never seen anything like this I think this he's outspun Mr Ero on this, on this front. Uh, basically, I think we have some pictures of it, he... Uh, took on the role of a taxi driver, right? So he, uh, this is a a month ahead of parliamentary elections in uh, in Norway. And he put on the uniform. He put on the uniform. All these people got into the taxi and weren't aware that he was the driver and slowly but surely began to realise who he was. Let's take a look at an extract. Du mener jeg ligner på Stoltenberg? Nei, er du Stoltenberg da? Så nå var jeg jo kjempeheldig, for jeg hadde tenkt jeg skulle skrive brev til deg. Ja. Det er alle disse her lederlønningene. The thing is, um, it's a month ahead of the election, etc. It turns out that some of those people were picked in a casting. Oh, you there see, were 14 it's all spin, people, isn't it? five of them were chosen and given a bit of money for the participation. But okay. apparently, they didn't know who the driver was going to be. But I think if you're being picked and given money By to get into a taxi, you, you're aware that something's <laughs> up, right? That it's not a regular. It's true. I watched the extracts that have been published, and everyone's very nice to him, isn't That's it? Right. There's no one uh, That's right. very... criticizing him at all. Interesting nope. that. Very little. Okay. And, but he's not the first. Uh, person to use undercover methods of getting up close and personal with the people, isn't it? That's right. Now, I'm assured by our Mathieu Mabin here that in this book, uh, Carnet Secret du General Patton, he was a a, a Second World War general, that um, he speaks about Abraham Lincoln dressing up in a big trench coat and going out to meet the troops during the American Civil War and not revealing who he was, right? To kind of get up and close and personal. Slightly more people. dangerous than driving around Oslo, <laughs> isn't it, really? I think so. And take a look at this, right? Because this is um, French president from 1974 to 1981, I believe, Valéry Giscard d'Estaing. And uh, he used to um, have lunches and dinners with, I think it was once a month, he would go to a regular French family's home, for dinner. Hi, I'm the president. I'm coming around for dinner. (laughs) Bringing a nice bottle of wine. I think the food was also provided. And uh, he also apparently once had bin men over to the Elysee Palace for breakfast. Uh, So that was also a way of... um, Getting photographers there. That's right. And uh, (laughs) getting rid of the old, I suppose, more what would you say, stodgy way of political communications. And I think we have some pictures, Ooh, Catherine, him of there. him playing football. Looking very at ease. <laughs> right, this was in the run-up to his election as president. And uh, yeah, I think for French uh, politics, that was a bit of a revolution. Some pretty short shorts on That's right. Uh, you wouldn't have had uh, Charles de Gaulle or Anne Company uh, playing football and then appearing in the dressing room afterwards, talking to the media without your shirt on and all this kind of stuff. It was... Wow. There you go. That's yep, it. That's... <laughs> My goodness, I thought you were joking. No. Nope. No, but there he is. All right, let's move swiftly on, James. I think yes. we've seen quite enough. Yes, of oh, Valerie. <laughs> a photo of Usain Bolt, of course, just again, world champion in the 100 yep. metres, and a bolt of lightning as well. Take a look at this photo. It's an extraordinary photo got by AFP uh, photographer Olivier Morin. Now, as he said himself, he can't really claim credit for the photo's brilliance. It was a pure accident uh, freak of nature uh, in the sense that uh, Hossein Bolt, Bolt of Lightning, is running along and, you know, just at that precise moment where he's pressing the camera button, um, there is actually a flash of lightning in the sky. So I'm Great sure photo. Mr. Bolt will hang that up. I'm sure he room. really likes to do the old <laughs> lightning bolt, doesn't he, when he, after he's run to victory? Absolutely. OK, thanks very much, James. Thanks, We're going to have to leave it there for tonight's uh, Media Watch. Well, uh, now it's time for the latest business news here on Fosfengata. 
Right, joining me uh, for this business update once again, it's Marcus Carlson. Hello there, Hi there, Catherine. Marcus. And we're going to start off with this big story from the uh, phone sector, the future of the embattled smartphone maker uh, BlackBerry. Yes, indeed. There's been a lot of speculation of where this company is going to go next and whether or not it will actually uh, survive on its own. And now the company says that uh, the board will be looking into the uh, company's uh, strategic alternatives. That includes the possible sale of BlackBerry. Now, shares in BlackBerry over on Wall Street, they have been soaring on this news. Henry Brown, he's been taking a closer look at uh, what the future could hold for the Canadian company. BlackBerry's decision to find a new escape route follows years of demise. Once a market leader, it's been overtaken by rivals Google and Apple. In 2007, the Canadian smartphone maker was at the height of its game, with a trading value of 90 billion euros. But in that same year, the iPhone arrived on the market and revolutionised the smartphone industry. BlackBerry tried to follow Apple's lead, introducing a touchscreen tablet only months after its American rival. The iPad powered ahead, whereas 500 million euros worth of BlackBerry playbooks were left unsold. Struggling with both smartphones and tablets, BlackBerry had to lay off 5,000 of its staff in 2012. The smartphone maker has two main options. It will either try to sell the company or enter a partnership. Monday's announcement marks the second time BlackBerry weighs its options. Amazon, Microsoft and Nokia have all considered buying the company in the past, and Dell looked at forming a strategic partnership. The message has so far been well received. BlackBerry stocks jumped 5.7% Monday morning after the decision was made public. OK, staying with smartphones, Apple will, will unveil two new versions of the iPhone next month on the 10th of September to be specific. Now this is according to the technology blog All Things D, which is usually considered to be well informed when it comes to these matters. One handset would be a new high-end smartphone. It's believed it will be called the iPhone 6. There's also talk of Apple unveiling the iPhone 5C, which uh, would be a cheaper low-end handset. It's seen as an attempt by Apple to boost its share in a part of the market that's dominated by Samsung and other players. All right, thanks for those top tips there, Marcus. We'll see how it turns out on September the 10th. And we're going to turn to the uh, issue of economic growth uh, next. And there are uh, more concerns, aren't there? The recovery in Japan isn't as good as had been expected. Yeah, the world's third largest economy didn't grow as much as expected during uh, the second quarter from April to June. It expanded by 0.6% in comparison to the first quarter this year. There were hopes for a repeat of the January to March figure, which, as you can see, here was 0.9 percent the disappointing figure put the spotlight on the merits of abenomics of course these are the economic policies championed by prime minister shinzo abe the figures may also put pressure on the government to scrap plans to raise sales taxes and if we stay with economic news greece's efforts to clean up its finances are starting to pay off by the looks of it the greek government says the state budget ran a primary surplus between january and july it means that if you exclude payments to service greece Greek debts, interest payments in other words, revenues they were higher than spending. It seemed to be a key milestone for Greece. It was weighed down though by a report over the weekend in the German paper Der Spiegel. It said the German Bundesbank believes that Greece may need yet another bailout. All right, so some pretty big announcements there. How did all of that impact on the uh, stock markets? Well, European indices, they uh, shut up shop in mixed territory. We saw some of the gains for the Frankfurt DAX. The disappointing figures from Japan and that Spiegel report helped to dampen trading. Borrowing costs for Italy came down in a debt auction on Monday, which uh, to a certain extent helped shares. And if we look at some uh, other stories out there, shares in the uh, no-frills carrier Ryanair lost almost 4% on Monday. It came as a group of pilots said cockpit crew feel inhibited from reporting safety concerns. The group says it polled more than a thousand Ryanair pilots, 89% of them said they didn't believe the airline had an open and transparent safety culture. Ryanair dismisses this survey as fabricated by union officials and said that it does indeed comply with all regulations. 
Meanwhile, the French engineering firm Technip has secured eight contracts worth 1.35 billion euros in Brazil. Technip won the deal in cooperation with the Norwegian firm DOF. The two will help to construct offshore pipelines for the oil giant Petrobras and Technip shares were up on the news of this deal. And 20,000 bank branches have been closed down in the European Union since 2008. Just last year, 5,500 uh, branches were shut. That's according to the news agency Reuters, which analyzed data from the European Central Bank. The branches have been shut to, co to cut costs. Reuters also says the rise of phone and internet banking has accelerated this process. It's an extraordinary figure though, isn't it? 20,000 bank branches shut down since 2008. Absolutely extraordinary, as you say. I'm, I'm afraid we do have to leave it there though. Thanks very much indeed. That was Marcus Carlson with the roundup of the business news. All right, do stay tuned here to Live from Paris. We're going to have the very latest from uh, Egypt uh, for you. Uh, huge crowds of Mohammed Morsi supporters again uh, gathering in the streets. You're seeing their live pictures of those demonstrations. More news coming up in just a very few minutes' time. Make Africa news your daily rendezvous with the African continent. Follow all the trends and latest developments with our correspondents and studio guests. Political, economic, cultural and social news from across the continent on Africa News, Monday to Friday, 9.45pm Paris time on Fosfan Cat.